Are you easily drawn in by the latest gear? Maybe you've overspent on tech in the past or you're wondering what to do with the tech you've already acquired. Well, today I'm gonna to share what's helped me overcome gear acquisition syndrome or gas. And look, I acknowledge that I currently have three stream decks on my desk right now. So who am I to talk, right? Okay, well, first of all, I use all three of these, okay? But more importantly, after some expensive lessons that I've learned personally, I have changed my approach and so far it has been working. So I'm gonna share my recommendations to help you either overcome or recover from gas or maybe never get afflicted in the first place. And let's begin with a really important question. It's one that I try to ask before every single purchase, not just gear, every purchase. And that is what problem does it solve? This is something that I learned a while back from a finance blog called Mr. Money Mustache, where he explained that when you spend money on things that solve your problems, it actually does make your life better and you're more satisfied with that purchase. Whereas if you just buy something that you sort of want in the moment and you don't really think about it and it honestly doesn't address a problem in your life, usually the reward is short-lived. Maybe it's the reward you get from actually clicking yes or making the purchase and walking out of the store. But after that, it just doesn't have the same effect. So what's going on? And I'm going to share a couple of examples in my life from the height of my gear acquisition syndrome in 2021. So let's take a look at this studio picture here. This is my old setup that I had in this is in September 2021. Let's first take a look at my I, no, second most expensive mistake, and that is investing in the Rodecaster Pro. Now, full disclosure, there is nothing wrong with the Rodecaster Pro. The reason that I bought it, it technically addressed a problem, which is that in 2021, the volume on my mic was quite low. And it was to the point where people were commenting on my videos and saying, your volume is really low. You need to do something about this. These levels are bad. And they were. And buying this allowed me to adjust the gain, adjust the volume, and I got it to a good level. However, it was more than what I needed. So yes, it solved the problem, but it sort of created a couple more. One is that it took up a lot of space on my desk. And as my setup started to change, it got more and more complicated to figure out how to fit this piece of tech onto my desk and in my setup. And eventually I actually pushed it off to the side, maybe this way. And I couldn't even reach it anymore because now it was off my desk, which solved one problem, but now I couldn't even reach it. I also never really learned how to use everything. So ultimately, I overspent and didn't really get something that was solving the problem. If I'm being totally honest, I had some FOMO. There were other people, friends that I knew, colleagues, other creators who had the Roadcaster Pro and it looked pretty cool. And it also, I thought it might make me look like a professional. So sort of bought into it. And at the end of the day, it's not what I actually needed. It's not the right solution. So let's look a look at this setup again and get into the second example of gear acquisition syndrome. And that has to do with this little guy over here, which is the Sony ZV E10. Now, right beside it is actually a the, my teleprompter here, and that's where my Sony ZV-1 is set up. And it still is to this day, literally right now, I'm talking to that camera. So what's going on here? And why is this maybe an example of gear acquisition syndrome? Well, first let's backtrack and think about the camera. So my very first camera besides the built-in was this guy, just a around $100 webcam HD. And while it was HD, the issue I had with this camera was the quality. There were limitations. For example, I could not adjust the depth of field, so I couldn't do anything about the background. Everything was in HD, and I just didn't find the quality consistent. So I bought the Sony ZV-1, which is what I'm using right now, and I've been using that ever since. And I'm really happy with it. It solved the problem. I like the quality. So why did I buy this, which is no longer set up on my desk? And I just had to acknowledge, I didn't need to buy this. Well, why did I buy it? Well, this came out about a year after I bought the camera I'm using right now. 
And I saw that it had the option for an interchangeable lens. And I thought, wow, that is a great feature. The Sony ZV-1 does not have an interchangeable lens. This has the advantage of the interchangeable lens. So if I want to change my lens, then I should get one of these. It was, it was also a little bit of FOMO. Have I ever changed the lens? No, because it wasn't a problem I was currently having. I was trying to solve a potential problem in the future that maybe one day I'll buy another lens and this lets me do it. But I didn't have a problem with my camera. There was nothing wrong with my camera. So me setting this up as a second camera in my studio was actually me justifying the fact that I just spent a lot of money on a second camera. Yes, I have taken this on some trips. I've used it for a few personal projects. But if I'm being honest, when I'm traveling, I usually just use my phone because it's lightweight, it's got an excellent quality camera, and it's always with me. So at the end of the day, I just had to admit that that was an example of gear acquisition syndrome. So what do I do now? What has changed? Well, first of all, I start with what's the problem I'm trying to solve? The other thing is that I will consider two factors, quality and friction. So for any of my existing technology, if I'm considering getting something else, I first have to evaluate what's the quality and what's the friction I'm experiencing. So if we take a look at the camera example, this is an example of quality. I was not happy with the quality that I was getting from this webcam. Now, since buying this, this I bought this in, I think, 2018. There are so many other webcams that are excellent quality that have so much more control. And that is great news. <laughs> At the time, there wasn't a lot of options. It was, you know, you have a webcam or you go up to something like a mirrorless camera, which is what I went with. Now, I have no regrets with that, that purchase, but that's an example of quality. Upgrading solved that problem. Now, the second one, friction. This is about evaluating how much friction there is with your setup. And when I say friction, let's think of the Rodecaster Pro example. The size was a source of friction because I felt like it was limiting the space that I had available and I eventually shoved it off <laughs> into a different location off the side of my desk. That was a source of friction. The other thing is that I didn't fully know how to use all of it and I knew it was just too much, but mostly it was the size. So what did I do about that? Well, to address friction, this is where the Streamer X came in. This is what I'm using now. It is an audio interface and it has many of the same features, but it is much smaller. It can fit on my desk and it is in within reach. So that solved a friction problem because it's not always a quality issue. I'm going to give you another example that's actually more recent from a friend of mine who invested in either this camera or a similar camera. This is really good quality and there was no doubt my friend said the quality is so good, but I have it in the teleprompter and it's really hard to reach and turn on and then turn off again. Also, a mirrorless camera like this usually has to be powered. And so there's a source of friction with the power and also the fact that it has to be turned on and off. Whereas if you have a webcam, it can be powered from your computer. And when you turn on your computer, your webcam is ready. When you turn off your computer, your webcam doesn't, you don't have to worry about it. So that is an example of friction. Friction and quality are two different things and you could have something that's really good quality, but if it's causing friction and maybe it's slowing you down, maybe you're not creating content, you're not turning on or using the gear that you have because of friction, that is a problem. And that is an example of let's evaluate what are some possible solutions for my friction problem. If it's quality, that's where you're looking for replacing with better quality. But also consider the friction. If you are buying something brand new for the first time, you have to think about not just the quality, but how will you use it? How will it fit into your setup? And is it possible that it's actually going to create friction for you? When you pause and stop and really ask yourself, what is the problem I am trying to solve? And also, what is the appropriate solution? Because you don't always need to spend the most money on the fanciest gear in order to solve the problem. You should be thinking, what is the most appropriate thing for you? Because ultimately, when you start to do that, then the shiny new object just does not look as appealing as it used to. Okay, well, no, I'm lying. Sometimes the new gear will still look appealing, but you're going to know that 
if it doesn't solve a problem, you're actually not going to have valued that purchase. Maybe you're gonna try and justify the purchase, but eventually you'll just acknowledge, like I did, that it was a matter of gear acquisition syndrome. So once you can get past that, believe me, it feels so much better on the other side. And when you've narrowed down and you have the right setup for you, it is going to help you to run more professional, engaging, and seamless online presentations.